Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your UGC Net Educator in this YouTube video. We will be moving forward with the concepts that we had, right? So in the previous two videos, we have covered two Indian novelists, Bankim Chandra Chatterjee and Mulk Rajanand. The next novelist in line that we all are supposed to talk about in this video is R.K. Narayan, right? So we know, first of all, the only fact that I think is, you know, prominent from the examination point of view, but we will be discussing some other facts as well, which can be asked, right? So the one fact that I want to give you right away before, in you know, jumping into the video in a detailed manner, that is that R.K. Narayan's guide, the novel, the guide was published, right? And it was the first novel in English to receive the award of Sahitya Academy, right? So what are the other details that we all do not know about R.K. Narayan? We'll see that all these things in this very video. So first of all, we are going to talk about him, right? R.K. Narayan. And he was the person who was born in Chennai in the year 1906. And he also passed away in Chennai as well. Correct. So born and brought up and of course passed away in Chennai. One of the most prominent writers if we talk about in the previous video, we talked about that how Mulkrajanand, right, was one of the three pillars who was there with R.K. Narayan and Raja Rao, right. The, so of course he is one of the prominent figures when it comes to the Indian novels that we have done. Now, first of all, a little bit of the biographical details which are important from the examination point of view because last time in one of the question papers, they have asked the full name of V.S. Naipaul. So, we cannot miss these very things which can be important from the examination point of view per se. So, let's just see this. The full name is Rasipuram Krishna Swami Narayan or Narayan Swami, right? This is the full name of R.K. Narayan. And he was the first recipient of the Sahitya Academy Award for his novel, The Guide, which was also what? Which was also adapted into a movie, right? And who was the protagonist there? Sri Devanand Ji was the protagonist who was there in the movie who played the role of Raju. We'll talk about, we'll talk about the novels that I have brought forth for you in this very video. A little bit, the overview. Summaries again, you all are supposed to do in your own, right? Coming to the next thing that I have, the next fact is the he wrote a semi-biographical trilogy. Now, what is a trilogy? Trilogy is the collection of three books. Tricolor, Tiranga, Teen Ranga hai, right? So, tricolor, we know it means three colors. So, trilogy are the books which are three in number published in a collection. So, he wrote a trilogy which is named as, the first book was Swami and Friends. The second book was The Bachelor of Arts and the third one being The English Teach. Correct? So, again, certain facts to be noted down. The next point is he created a fictional town Malgudi in his novels. Most of the novels of R.K. Narayan has the mention of this very town which is really prominent. And of course, there was Swami and Friends and Malgudi Raids etc. which was adapted into a TV serial as well. If you can recall, Doordarshan Pay it used to come. Correct? So, certain superficial right the official sorry information that we had second is now he got awards the third and the second most important gallantry award in india two awards padma bhushan right and padma vibhushan in the year 2000 so padma bhushan he got in 1964 right and padma vibhushan he got in the year 2000 one year before he passed away. So, he passed away, we talked about in the previous, in the first slide, only in the introductory slide, that he passed away in the year 2001. And before passing away a year, right, in 2000, he got Padma Vibhushan. Again, one important fact to be noted down here from the literature perspective, because Sahitya Academy Award is something which is given to the literature, you know, the people who write pieces of literature, be it novels, etc. So, he was the first one to achieve that for the novel, The Guide. So, one of the prominence 
prominent novels that we have from R. K. Narayan is Swami and Friends, which is there in the trilogy. And in this video, we are going to discuss the trilogy along with the eighth book which came, the eighth novel of R. K. Narayan, that is the guide. Because R. K. Narayan's works are so much in number, we cannot cover all those things in detail. But yes, of course, I'll be providing you with the list of important novels, maybe short story collections, etc. So stay tuned, keep this video and jot these pointers down, see this video carefully. Next is, so first of all, the first novel that we are going to discuss is Swami and Friends and it was the first novel which was written and published by R. K. Narayan in the year 1935. So again, if I gave you the mention that of course, Malguri is a fictional town, right? It does not really exist. So first mention of Malguri is there in Swami and Friends, important from the net perspective. The original title of Swami and Friends was Swami the Tate, which was changed. I'll bring forward, you know, the information related to why the title was changed. First of all, Graham Greene was the one who was so fascinated by this novel of Narayan's that he put this point across that I'll get you a reputed and a good publisher. So he got Swami and Friends, that is Graham Greene, right? got this particular book published by Hamish Hamilton, who was one of the prominent publishers of that time. So, it was Graham Greene, important, very important. It was Graham Greene who told Narayan to change the title of this very novel, Swami and Friends, so that it can, you know, be the one which can be compared to, a little to, Rudyard Kipling's. things, talking and company. So, this was a work written by Kipling, right? And to give Narayan the idea that this work can be compared somewhere or the other to Rudyard Kipling's works, Talky and company, you should not give it the title Swami the Tate, but the original title should be Swami and friends, right? Tate here is the one which is giving us the reference to cricket because in the novel, Swami and his friends, the four, four, four or five friends that he has, all of them love playing cricket, right? So, portrays the peculiarities of human relationships and ironies of the Indian daily life that how in that point of time people were trying to live, how and what was the social condition at that point of time. Modern versus American tradition can be seen here because here there is an amalgamation of the English and the Indian. So, modern and the tradition that is, you know, already there, modern and the ancient tradition is being compared to in this very particular work of Narayan. This fact, I already told you, it has a certain kind of connection with the title, right? So, Graham Greene was the one who asked Narayan to change the title from Swami the Tate to Swami and Friends. Correct? And it is adopted to a C TV series with the same name and it was also adopted like Malgudi Days. Right? Then, this is the first cover, the book cover that we have for Swami and Friends that I have brought forth. Now, coming to the overview and the character list of the prominent characters in the novel. So, first of all, we all know Swami would be the protagonist, right, after whom this very particular novel is, you know, named. So, Swami or his full name, Swami Nathan is the protagonist, right, the main character. He's a small, you know, kid who goes to school. Mani, Tomu, Shankar and Samuel the P. These four are four friends of Swami, right. So, four friends of Swami, Mani. These things that I have brought forth for you in the commas can be asked in the question that which character was known as mighty good for nothing in Swami and friends. So, we know that it was money and he was really strong. He was not afraid of the teachers, right? Somu calls, Swami calls Somu the uncle of the class. Why? Because Somu was the monitor of the class. So, that's why he was known as the uncle of the class. Then we have Shankar, who's a classmate, who is known as the most brilliant boy in the class because he scores really well. He is the one who studies really well. Correct. Coming to Samuel the P, 
this is the only Christian friend of Swami. So, as the title also suggests that this story, this novel revolves around the story of how Swami and his friends lived, to, you know, lived together, played cricket, went to school, did certain things for fun, etc. So, this is the story which revolves around Swami and his friends. The other person which is really prominent is Rajam. Now, Rajam is the person who comes to the Albert Mission School. This could be a question as well that in which school Swami and his friends, you know, used to study. It was Albert Mission School. And if we talk about Albert Mission School, this wor work, right? Swami and friends has this very character as I talked about. And this person which is named, right, Rajam. He was the person who was first when he came. His father was a police officer and he got transferred to, right, in Malgudi. So, this school was in Malgudi and this was Swami's rival, first of all, when he initially came. And then they became a really good friends. So, now Swami, from four friends, he had five friends. And eventually, with the course of the novel, we see this very thing that by the end, Rajam's father again is transferred and he has to leave Malgudi to go with his father and Swami cries, he gives him a gift of books which money gives, you know, uh, Rajam on the train when the train starts. So, this is basically the ending which is there and Swami now thinks that yes, maybe Rajam is going to forget me now, right? So, money is the one who consoles him and says that nahi, nahi bulega, etc. And of course, one prominent thing, Rajam is the one who gives us, shows us how Europeans were living, how they used to speak English. So, he was the one who spoke English like a European, right? Next is the second book in the trilogy, The Bachelor of Arts that we have. Second book published in 1937. Again, here the setting is Malgudi only and Narayan here depicts the strands of suffering and humor in a beautiful tapestry. So, suffering plus humor. You see the artistic style of Narayan here, right? Of Malgudi and its vibrant characters. And this is why he has been compared with O. Henry as well, right? He has been compared with O. Henry, right? Guy de Maupassant. And he has also been compared with William Faulkner, etc. So, why is he first of all compared with O. Henry? Because of the fact that how R.K. Narayan used to compress his novels, his works, right, in a simple language and talked about things as O. Henry did in his works. Correct? First page, the cover page of R.K. Narayan's The Bachelor of Arts. Now, coming to the characters that we have here, the prominent characters that we have are only three in number. Chandran, who is the protagonist, right? Malati and Sushila. Now, this is the story of a person who has done the name Bachelor of Arts suggests that this very thing is, you know, uh, written after whom? Chandran. So, Chandran is a person who has done his bachelor's in bachelor's degree in history and he is the one who is the protagonist and he tries to become a sage how we will talk about that he first of all let us just talk about that how he is a protagonist he has done his bachelor's in history now comes he is introduced to a girl whose name is Malti with whom he eventually falls in love and wants to get married to what happens later on is that his parents deny because of the fact that in Indian Kundali system, etc., we see that Kundalia should be the ones which will be the ones which match, correct? So, what happens is that one of them, you know, had, Chandan was the one who was Manglik and this girl was not Manglik, Malti was not Manglik. So, there is this belief in Hinduism that a Manglik marrying a non-Manglik will let the death, let's lead to the death of the person who is a non mangli So, the thing eventually turned out to be that Malthi would die if she marries to Chandran. Now, he is broken hearted, he is very, you know, uh, dispirited and now he wants to turn to a sage. He leaves everything behind, he wants to turn to a sage, he turns to a sage eventually. What happens later on is that he thinks of his family while being, you know, on certain um, 
voyages, etc., on tours, etc. So he thinks that no, I should not be leaving my family alone. I should be living with them, serving with them, right? So what he does is he comes back and he marries this very girl named Sushila, who was chosen by his parents only. So see the story of the maturity of mind that how eventually he comes from a young mind, it turns into a mature mind who marries and finally settles down. So it is the journey of the person named Chandra, who is Chandran, who is the Bachelor of Arts. Correct. Next is the English teacher, which is the third book in the trilogy that we were talking about, which is semi-autobiographical in nature, right? So third novel of the trilogy, autobiographical it is as well as the other two novels that we talked about. Written when Narayan was dealing with the death of his wife, Rajam. So what happened was that Rajam was so near and dear to R.K. Narayan. Rajam was the name of R.K. Narayan's wife. So after many obstacles, first of all, he got married to the love of his life. And when eventually Rajam passed away, Narayan's wife passed away, certain things took a toll on him and eventually he wrote this very work, which is known as The English Teacher. Correct. So it was published in 1945 and again the setting is Malguri, love story of Krishna, who is the English teacher and his wife uh, and his wife Sushila, vivacious wife Sushila. So Krishna and Sushila, we have another ca character named Sushila which was in The Bachelor of Arts, right, with whom Chandra eventually marries. Coming here to the English teacher, the protagonist is Krishna, right. This is the cover page of the English teacher. So Krishna is the protagonist, right? And the English teacher, he teaches in a college per se, right? Coming to Sushila, wife of Krishna, she dies by developing a typhoid fever by after getting stung by a bee. So a bee comes and the, you know, stings. Sheila and she eventually develops a fever, she develops typhoid and she eventually dies, right? And then we have the daughter, the third character is the daughter of Krishna and Sushila, that is Leela, who is an infant who is taken care very well, taken care of very well by, you know, Sushila only, whom Krishna finds peace and comfort with, right? And then we have a sannyasi who is a sage which will be even which is eventually introduced in the play who could talk to spirits. He has this very thing in his mind that he can talk to spirits. And then we have the headmaster who is the headmaster of a particular school and Krishna is introduced to the new education system through the headmaster and he eventually leaves his job. Now coming to the plot here, the plot is that Krishna and Sushila love each other so much but at times Krishna ignores, he does not have that communication thing going on with Sushila properly. So he loves her but they cannot really communicate their needs to one another. Coming back to Leela, now first of all Sushila dies, she passes away because of the typhoid fever that she had and now Krishna is left only and only with their only child, the daughter that they had, her name is. Leela, correct? So he, looking at Leela, thinks of Sushila and matlab, the days that they spend together that this is the thing which in the person with whom I can find myself at ease with, right? And now what happens is that one day he comes across a sannyasi, a sage who says this very thing that I can talk to spirits. So Krishna is the one who does not, who is really heartbroken after the death of Sila. So eventually he gives into this thought and he tells the sannyasi to help him talk to Sushila. Correct? So he does that, but first is a fail that could not be done and eventually he talks to Sushila. It really happens. Right? And then we have the headmaster from whom we see the education system in the school from whom we see the theme of education and from sannyasi we see the theme of death, correct? So education is being talked about through the usage of a, you know, headmaster who is nameless. Important fact to note down here is the headmaster in this very work, the English master is not named. Coming to again that he, Krishna, is introduced to the headmaster 
who talks to him about the school system etc so krishna by the end of the novel leaves his job as an english teacher in the college right from the college he leaves and he eventually becomes a teacher in a school correct so this is a this is an excerpt certain lines right we'll read the, those lines i left the college usually at 4:30 pm the moment the last bell rang and avoiding all interruptions reached home within about 20 minutes as soon as i turned street i caught a glimpse of sushila tinkering at her little garden in our compound or watching our child child's name leela right and watching our child as she toddled about picking pebbles and mud right was not in my wife's it was not in my wife's nature to be demonstrative but i knew she waited there for me so here krishna is talking about the glimpses when sushila was alive that how he used to come right from the office from the college and just looking at her wife he also felt at ease right next is another most prominent novel by rk narayan the guide which was adapted into a film and also a play of the same name and in the film it was adapted 1965 in which devanand was the protagonist named raju and it was also adapted in a play with the same name in the year 1960 now coming back again here it was published in the year 1958 but it won the sahitya academy award for the first novel in english in the year 1960 so after 2 years it was published it got the award right setting is again malgudi it follows the life of an indian man named raju as he evolves throughout his life to become one of the most prominent holy men in india now we'll talk about the plot a little bit but yes of course it has an ambiguous ending we do not know what happens in the end we are the reader is you know left hanging there and then that what do you think would be the ending so that is something which is there correct and as i told you got the award in 1960 now page first page of the the cover page of this very book is this right now talking about the important characters here we have multiple characters here but according to the plot i'll be telling you the, because of the fact that i'll be telling you the overview these three characters are the most prominent ones now first is raju who's the protagonist also known as railway raju because he's the person who acts as a guide to people to guide them to various tourist places etc shows them the places around right who turns into a holy man just out of fun because at that point of time when this novel was set people even in today's time they you do believe in superstitions right so he because of the fact that people were giving in right people were really drawn towards superstitions he called himself a baba right he told that i can do miracles so he eventually just for his own way to gather certain money be the one who is financially stable he got himself called a baba coming to and he later on literally it is seen through the course of the novel that he literally turns into one of the most prominent you know holy men in india and he eventually has a spiritual awakening by the end of the novel right so rosie is the daughter of a dancer she loves to dance and it is only raju with whom she can find the comfort of being her own self and not her husband whose name is marco so marco is rosie's husband he's a writer right but he does not like rosie to perform he does not like rosie to dance but he provides him with anything and everything right so he tries to play the role of a good husband but eventually he does not like her to dance which rosie feels a little bad about and she eventually when then turns and moves in with raju and later on because of that very fact she is renamed nalini right so she starts living with raju starts following her passion that is dancing right so this is the novel and in the ending what happens is that there is famine there is drought in the village and people have come raju is fasting he is fasting so that the rain could come right so he is fasting and eventually we see this very thing that raju says that i can feel that the rain is coming but that thing is not made sure by narayan 
to tell us that eventually had it rained or had it not correct so we are just left in between that's why the ambiguous ending other important novels other important works by narayan rk narayan's mr sampat which has the subtitle the printer of malgudi now i have given you the prominent novels in the previous slides as well you on your own are supposed to do one thing as well that try to see if those things have certain kind of subtitle as mr sampath is because they ask in the question you know in the question paper this very thing or the job of mr sampath has been asked right so you need to know this very thing the man eater of malgudi the dark room mr sampath financial expert you can take a screenshot or you can jot these very pointers down right waiting for the mahatma man eater of malgudi vendor of sweets the painter of signs the tiger of malgudi talkative man the world of nagaraj and grandmother's tale so you can take the screenshot and you can read these uh, verses summaries as well on your own now he was the one who translated two indian epics that we have the mahabharata and the ramayana in a simple language in the modern prose right so the ramayana was translated by him in 1972 mahabharata in 1978 in the modern prose right in the modern way then we have his collection of short stories number one is lolly road 1956 a horse into goats and other stories number two under the banyan tree and other stories and the grandmother's tale take the screenshot you need not read the short stories on your own at its entirety but yes do know the names of these very short story collection now i have certain pyqs for you all as always so let's just read this very question first of all every demon carries within himself a known to himself a tiny seed of self destruction and goes up in thin air at the most unexpected moment to which of narayan's characters the above statement applies the answer to this question is option c vasu in the man eater of malgudi is the one to whom this particular statement is ascribed to so you need to know read the summary to know why this statement is ascribed that is to be done on your own next question the bhasmasur myth is used in narayan's novel the answer to this very question is option a the man eater of malgudi you could have taken an educated guess only here man eater bhasmasur myth correct narayan the horse and two goats is set in a tiny village called answer is option c tritam Who among the following Indian writers in English has created an identifiable imagined locale? So imagined, imagined means fictitious. It is option C. That is R K Narayan who created the imagined locale known as Malgudi. In R.K. Narayan's Swami and Friends, which game offers Swami the best kind of emotional release from the strains and pressures of disagreeable circumstances? The answer to this question is option A. That is cricket, and that is why even the title was initially Swami the Tate, right? Named after a cricketer. and of course swami and his friends like to read uh, you like to play sorry a lot of cricket so you see the mention there that is the one game which emotionally releases certain things from the from the character named swami's mind right so this is what we were supposed to do in today's concept video i'll be bringing forward certain more writers for you all with regard to indian novelists as well so stay tuned keep on studying i'll see you again have a good day thank you so much Thank <laughs> you.